Ten years ago, I was living in London, and I was selected to be a judge in a radio competition in Berlin. One of my fellow judges was from the ORF, um, from Ö1, and in the space of a week, I fell in love with this woman. Um, for three years, we uh, met up all over Europe, tried to sustain a long-distance relationship, and then it just became ridiculous, and we said, look, we've got to decide. Are you going to come to London, or am I going to move to Vienna? And we had an interesting debate, who was going to give up their flat, their friends, their family, their job, just start again. And I lost that debate. <laughs> and so I'm here. But in fact, you know what? I won that debate, because I like living in Vienna a lot more than my Austrian wife does. And that's very, very common in international pairs. The Viennese have a lot of problems with their hometown. And um, I think that that is a, partly because of this. These are the 20 most searched words online about Vienna. So people put in Vienna, and then they put in other words. It's a beautiful list. It's a fascinating list. It's 2014. It's in English. It's important to say that. In German, it's slightly different. But this is not a very dynamic list. <laughs> this is not my Vienna. Um, so I needed a job to do in Vienna. I, had to, I was a radio producer in the UK. and. Um, I struggle with German prepositions. I was never going to work on, uh, on German language radio, so I needed to create a new career. Um, as you can see from the list, I think the, the difference between the fantasy and the reality of Vienna in 2015 is one of the biggest in the world in terms of cities, and it's quite a destructive gap. So I thought, well, how could we maybe close that gap a little bit by um, creating uh, creative responses to the news and telling some new stories? Every city needs new stories. My Vienna is Museumsquartier, it's the Donau Canal street art scene, it's FM4, it's Café Feel, it's the uh, Tusten Bornemische Augarten. But, you know, people are not looking for those things in Vienna. They don't expect them, they don't particularly, you know, they have a fantasy and they find it, of course. I mean, all of this stuff is still here, but it's not particularly um, healthy, I don't think, if, if people say Vienna's got a great deal of history and not much future. Um, so, uh, we created a uh, small culture group, uh, political culture group, Space and Place. And um, we try to mix up fun and politics, uh, progressive politics. And this is a space that many people are uncomfortable with. They don't believe that politics should really be fun, that it should be a rather ernst, you know, a serious business. And I actually, I think that uh, many young people are sadly becoming disengaged with politics. And this is partly because it's become a rather um, serious business, and it need not be. I think it's quite easy to be political and to enjoy yourself at the same time. Um, so space and place are two sociological terms. Space is the, uh, is the, uh, the uh, psychological space around you, the, uh, the, the people, the ideas, and then place are the uh, material things around you, just to uh, summarize very briefly. So um, we wanted a kind of new vision for the city, new ways to play with the city and to remix it in some way, to present it not just to the rest of the world slightly differently, but also to the Viennese themselves, who are rather skeptical about their own city. Uh, we heard about it being a smart city. Um, it's the 12th largest city in Europe. It really doesn't feel that way. And apparently, um, that is only measuring the Hauptgemelde, the people who are officially registered here. There are another 200,000 people in Vienna, so it is a two million uh, person city already. Um, the city, of course, has much smaller weekends, which is one of the things that troubles me most. 38% of Viennese leave every weekend, and uh, young, cool people leave. They don't particularly belong to the city or identify with it. They work here, and they, they seek out um, countryside at the weekend. Um, but I think that Vienna, uh, I think the rise of the um, far right in Vienna means that many people, and in Austria, means that many people are slightly disengaged. They don't feel so um, comfortable with um, their country as perhaps they, they, they could do. Um, but I definitely think it's a mistake to leave the city at the weekends. I think that uh, in London, people live for the weekend, and that is the moment where you really explore the city. And if you, if you get out of town, then you're not really belonging, you know, and it's a great feeling to belong to the city. Um, at the rise of the, the FPÖ, the, the far-right party uh, in, in Austria, suggests to me that some people are just not reading their history books. You know, Austria has tried the politics of, of intolerance, of uh, blaming outsiders, for um, what's going wrong, and it didn't work out very well, so I'm surprised to see it happening again. Um, so, our work has never been more relevant. We thought that uh, it's important to present diversity in a fun way. Um, this is the Vienna Ugly Tour. We decided to tour Vienna's ugliest buildings, the worst architecture in the city. 
This is a new way of looking at the city. Um, it is a uh, creative response to the fact that people think of the city as some kind of dusty, dull museum. So uh, there's plenty of ugliness in Vienna, but one of the jokes, of course, is that um, one of the, if you tour the ugly buildings, you're going to see a lot of beauty as well. So you can't avoid that, really. But we ask people to ignore the beauty. We saw it in the spirit of Conchita Wurst. That, um, Conchita Wurst is a transvestite with a beard, which is breaking all the rules of what a transvestite should be. It's a kind of transgression. So we thought, um, nobody tours ugly buildings, do they? But we sought them out. And it somehow is celebrating this fascination in Vienna with death and melancholy and the dark side. If we made a tour of uh, the most beautiful Baroque gardens and palais, the Viennese would not be so interested in it. But if you organize a tour of the dark side, they like it very much. You know, it appeals to this uh, gloom which we have in the city. If people visit Milan, they go there for a um, beautiful design, uh, cool fashion, great food, football, and of course you're going to meet the locals when you go and do those things. You know, there's, there's no distinction really between what, what, what outsiders do and locals do. If you go to Berlin, you might go there for a great contemporary architecture, for a cool creative party scene, for some interesting contemporary art. Uh, you're going to meet lots of Berliners there because that is what they're interested in. If you come to Vienna and you ride around in a fiaca or you uh, go to a, uh, I don't know, some kind of uh, ball, let's say, a costumed concert, um, you eat a chocolate cake at Schönbrunn, you're not going to meet that many Viennese. So there's a disconnection and a kind of disrespect in some way for the visitors to Vienna. And I, I see them as a great opportunity. I think they bring a kind of op optimism and an outsider perspective. If you look at the life ball, that is very much open to outsiders. It's, a, it's got a global buzz to it. So it's a big mistake. I think many Viennese find visitors to their city slightly ridiculous and tend to avoid them and the places that they are. But in fact, um, there's great potential. So our tour appeals equally to, to Viennese and to outsiders. It's in English. Many architects come on it. And some of them don't say that they're architects at the beginning of the tour because they're slightly uncomfortable that we're going to be uh, disrespecting them. But by the end, it becomes clear that there are quite a few architects on the tour who enjoy be being cruel about each other's work. <laughs> so, again, you know, welcome to Vienna. Um, yeah, the, 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 tour, the, the idea is to remix the city, is, is to present um, the tour in a new way. It's been reported on in the Swedish press, it was in The Guardian, um, it was in uh, uh, Agence France Presse, and um, so we're very pleased to be able to tell new stories about Vienna. It's also the year of walking in Vienna, 2015, so we're very pleased to um, turn that into a story, an international story. Please walk more, I do recommend it. Um, so Vienna's international image can be seen as a unfriendly, unfunny and unchanging. And with this tour, we wanted uh, somehow to, to present a slightly more urban, more gritty, more contemporary, and more humorous um, city. Nina, who's uh, with uh, us tonight, um, co-presented it with me. I thought that as an English Irishman, it would be slightly disrespectful to uh, do a tour in English of Vienna's worst architecture. So I wanted an Austrian to join me to give me a little bit more uh, insider <laughs> credibility, because otherwise it's a bit disrespectful. Many people are quite angry about the tour, though. They don't think it's a very good idea, but um, you know, you've got to provoke people, obviously. Um, there are plenty, but through humor, we wanted to make some serious points about UNESCO, um, about gentrification, um, about the role of the media, the populist press. Many non-architects have lots to say about architecture, um, but equally, the, the city is changing quite fast, and fashion um, is a cruel thing. Some of the buildings which we love now were not at all popular when they were built, and of course, some of them uh, were extremely popular when they were built and look terrible now. Um, but uh, plenty of the buildings we visit are old. If you Google um, ugly buildings, and I recommend you do, um, you, you come up with some pretty crazy stuff. Um, and if you Google ugly buildings Vienna, you probably won't find most of the ones on our tour. I'm not allowed for legal reasons to show you some of the buildings, but believe me, there is some great ugliness. And we go inside some of them. It's somehow a... Um, we celebrate buildings that nobody else looks at. So there's something rather like the underdog. You know, it's rather sweet to kind of go to some buildings because nobody's ever stood outside them. You know, this was a group of 80 people standing in front of this building. You know, and the people looked out of the window going, hey, they're talking about our building. But they didn't know what we were saying, obviously. <laughs> Hopefully, they'll come on the tour, you know? And in fact, the, the marketing director of Marriott Hotels, uh, we, we visit the Marriott on the ring, uh, Yasmina Brahimi, I'm meeting her on Thursday. She said, we need to meet for coffee. So uh, if, if the Marriott drops off the tour, you'll understand that uh, I've had a good offer. Um, <laughs> rebellious optimism. Um, this is a, a part of our campaign. I have a little badge on here. I've got a spare badge, if anybody would like one, just one. These are two words that you don't normally see together, and we would like very much for people to 
uh, approach the city more positively. There's a great deal of angst in Vienna. People are rather nervous of um, taking a risk and speaking with a stranger. And this is quite destructive. You have a lot more spontaneous fun moments in some of the Latin countries, certainly in Ireland and, and the UK. People will just go for silliness for no reason. It's rather unusual here. I have this um, theory that the Viennese are slightly overeducated. They live in their heads and not their bodies. They don't dance very comfortably, and they tend not to be comfortable just drifting around, just trying stuff out. So please, please try that a little bit more. Um, rebellious optimism is partly this idea that um, if you're a woman, where would you like to go back to in history when things were better than now? If you are disabled, where would you go back to? If you're a migrant, if you are gay, you know, things have never been better, and I think it's really important that people don't continually just approach. The media is full of uh, really ugly news the whole time. It can lead to despair, but in fact, in many ways, um, the world is getting better. The information has become much cheaper. Uh, music's available. You know, it's, a, it's an incredible time to be alive with all of that uh, dynamic change out there, uh, and travel. Food scene is much more interesting than it used to be. Um, Vienna is regularly ranked number one in the world um, as a city, but the Viennese think, well, if Vienna's number one, there must be something wrong with the rankings. You know, they're not actually looking at the right criteria. People are extremely skeptical here. You know, they, they, they look at other cities and they think they're cool, um, and they, they look at Vienna and they don't think it's very cool. But actually, this is a very interesting city, as I say. It's, uh, it's an intelligent city, and um, it's an easy city to live in, and that's something really, really valuable. I think we should, we should celebrate some life here. This inequality is very, very low. If you live in London, you're confronted every day with extreme wealth, Extreme poverty, it's quite, uh, there's a lot of social tension. Uh, in Vienna, there's really very little. We should uh, in enjoy it as it is. There's also a great deal of funding available for arts. Austria is one of only four countries in the world that sends, spends more money on culture than on military. So that's something to celebrate. Um, of course, there are challenges out there, but we can, we can overcome them. I really urge you, um, optimistic people vote much more progressively than people who are nervous about the future. They, they're curious, they trust, they are looking for vision. And I think um, there's less um, vision offered by politicians these days. A lot of them are dull bureaucrats who simply, not naming any names, who simply respond to crises rather than offering you know, a vision of the future. So I think that uh, perhaps NPOs can, can step into that and offer some kind of uh, fun solutions. Um, the Vienna Coffeehouse Conversations is an event we run every month um, where people sit down with strangers from all around the world. Um, we've had 40 different nations so far. Um, it's quite unusual to be offered the opportunity to have dinner with a Chinese person, one-to-one, -one, and we have many of questions to ask each other. The questions are things like, um, how, uh, what have you learnt from travel that you brought back to your life at home? Um, what part of your life was a waste of time? Um, how important is money to you? And you get very different answers from people from different parts of the world, but it sends out a signal about Vienna that there's plenty of people here who are curious, who are open, you know, in an age of... Uh, you very rarely read about Austrian politics internationally, but when you do, it's because some right-wing person said something very, very ugly about black people or gay people or, or gypsies or Jews. So, in fact, this is uh, an opportunity to, to show Vienna's friendly. There's many Viennese would love to sit down, celebrate the coffeehouse tradition, and have some good food in a classy environment. It um, doesn't cost very much. Please, please join us. Um, as I say, 40 countries have taken part so far. Um, the romance of the coffee houses. To me, the coffee houses are one of the most beautiful things about Vienna, but we wanted to somehow update that because they're slightly neglected, a bit kitsch, some of them, but actually they are lots of great ideas born in coffee houses. And um, yeah, Vienna's not as unfriendly as you think. Many people in Vienna don't come from Vienna, so even if it was unfriendly, there's plenty of other options around. <laughs> um, we uh, also have different social dining projects. This is an article from Der Standard last month um, where we talked about the, um, the ways in which um, you can use food to celebrate diversity. So we're launching a project in the uh, spring called uh, Soul Food Safari where we're going to have a starter in one restaurant. We're going to walk as a big group to another restaurant for a main course, um, but not in the first district, in the fourth or the tenth, take people out of town and a... The three restaurants will be perhaps a Cambodian starter, a Peruvian main course, and then a Russian dessert. And we'll hear a few words from the cooks about food culture in their country. But we want to sit at one big table, which is extremely un-Viennese. People tend to be rather private here. You get it in, in Prague and Berlin, but not so much in Vienna. Um, and we also um, do the Magda social dinners, where you can come um, for dinner with refugees and uh, hear some obviously incredible stories. It's a, a, hopefully a creative response to the fact that the news is full of really 
terrible things going on in the world, but in fact, and it can lead to a kind of hopelessness, helplessness, where you think, well, what, what can we do about that? But actually, there's a, a beautiful way that you can do it. Simply come support the Magdas Hotel, which is a hotel 80% staffed by refugees. So please um, join us for that. Uh, there's one next week. Um, I'm also a DJ, and I play music on city streets. Um, this was us listening to some uh, Bollywood music, and um, the idea is that uh, kids from different migrant communities uh, dance much more comfortably often than, than the locals do, the locals, the uh, kind of native uh, Viennese, and uh, they often hear their own music, let's say music from Nigeria, music from Bosnia, music from Turkey, in their own environments, in, in their home, at weddings, at parties. They don't often hear it on the streets being played by a honky white boy. Um, and it gives them the opportunity to dance, to show each other their steps, you know, for them to kind of lead the way. And, and they become, hopefully, a little bit more, um, you know, proud of their heritage and recognize that it has worth just beyond their own community. Um, it's great fun to watch children dancing. They're so unselfconscious. Not just children. Uh, people, adults can become rather uh, childlike when they dance. Um, this is Francis. Francis is a teacher and an uh, um, actor, and he's, uh, he's, he's uh, from Nigeria originally, and he's regularly offered the role of criminals and drug dealers. Francis always says no, because he uh, doesn't identify with those roles at all, so he, he ends up not missing out on a lot of work. So we said to him, would you like to be a policeman? He said, oh yeah. So um, this, is, this is our fantasy future, Vienna, where Nigerians become policemen and rather enjoy it and bring a little charisma to it. <laughs> um, uh, it's, uh, we, we also had a 60-year-old um, Egyptian woman with a headscarf who was cycling around the city, something you would definitely not see, um, but which we'd quite like to see. And we also had a drag queen eating uh, a wurst on a wurstel stand, uh, eating with bread. I'd, I'd, uh, I'm not making any, any references. And um, so we just imagined a, uh, some kind of, we remixed the city with uh, how we'd like it to be. And not all of our projects are successful. We actually um, proposed to um, Vina Linien, that the drivers on uh, the trams, the, the buses, the, tr the trains, um, the U-Bahn, would say good morning. There are 26 different first languages spoken uh, by the drivers on, on Vina Linien. We said, why don't you say, allow them on the International Day of Mother Tongues to say uh, good morning, say I'm in German. Hello, I come from Ukraine originally, and I'd like you to, hear, I'd just like to say good morning to you in Ukrainian, and if you come from another country, please say good morning in your, in your home language. Vina Linien said no for four reasons. First of all, we can't force our staff to do this. Uh, some of our passengers won't like it. The unions definitely won't let us do it. And I um, can't remember the fourth one, but banal reasons, for, for no reason, basically. It would have cost them absolutely nothing. And so this is the kind of institutional thinking we're up against. We've had lots of press coverage, and that makes our story more important. That we're able to tell new stories about Vienna. And uh, I urge you to remix your city, wherever it is, to, to play with it, to play with the international stereotypes, and to somehow uh, refresh it to, to mix up progressive politics and fun to engage a new generation. Thank you very much.